Hi and welcome. So this time around we have a little bit of an interesting project. It's, it's a fairly simple looking project. Just make a T-slot shaped profile piece four inches long. You know, simple straightforward, right? Except if you look at the dimensions, 0.281 by 0.238 thick, four inches long. That means it'll fit in this quarter inch bus bar. And it's only going to take a tiny section of this quarter inch bus bar. Uh, but then you get to the issue of how do I hold this thing? Uh, work holding is definitely going to be a challenge with this guy. So uh, there's a lot of interesting aspects to this that uh, made me kind of interesting about it. It's going to be a custom heat sink. I don't know what it's for. And they're going to cut off slices of this T uh, profile for the heat sink. Uh, probably for a welding operation, I guess, but I'm not entirely certain. So I guess first things first, I'm just going to cut off a little bit over a four inch section of this bus bar here. And uh, then we'll uh, head over to the mill and try and knock this guy out. All right, so we've got this over here on the bandsaw. We're going to cut out a little bit over a four inch section of this. And you'll notice that it's not really uh, copper colored, even in the areas where there aren't, there isn't paint. That's because it's been plated, uh, probably to protect against corrosion, because this was from a bus bar. Now the question is, this stuff isn't exactly a quarter inch to begin with. This stuff's not a quarter inch to thick to begin with. It's like 0.2475. And I need to take it down to 0.238. So that gives me nine thousandths to work with. So the question is, if I take uh, like four, four thousandths off one side, five thousandths off the other side, will it clean up good, good enough for the part? Uh, that is yet to be seen. First up, we're going to clean up the edges and then we'll switch it to the face next. That way I can get some square sides. I'm using a really large face mill only because it'll save me a tool change when I go to do the faces. Obviously, this is massive overkill for the edge here, but it should work fine. Uh, it's held pretty decently in the vise. Copper can be difficult to work with. It's very gummy and I believe it work hardens. So those are two things that can make it challenging. Don't know if you can see that, but getting a pretty nice finish. Got both edges cleaned up. So now we're going to do the face and I think I'll start with the nastiest face first. I'm intending on just using the material right here, but uh, we're going to clean up the whole face. I know you can't see much of this on this side, but you'll be able to see the material come out the back. Uh, we're taking off about five thousandths on this first pass. This is the really ugly side. So we're gonna take off five thousandths and it looks like it didn't get rid of the screw marks there where they were pressing into the bus bar, but the rest is cleaning up nicely. So we'll just uh, deburr this, flip it over and see if we can get the final dimension. It's taken off all the paint. So we've definitely got a good section more than wide enough over here. By the way, these are aluminum uh, cutting uh, inserts on here. So they're positive rake polished. One thing I did notice is there a little bit of copper welding going on where the copper chips that came off pressed into the surface and were welded there. It's kind of weird. I don't think I've seen that with other materials before. I had to pick a couple of these chips out of here with my fingernail off the surface. Alrighty, so we got a nice finish there. I think next I'm going to cut out a half inch strip of this and we're just going to work on that. I think I'm going to glue it to a piece of aluminum with some super glue and use that as my holding fixture because otherwise I'd only be able to grab by a hundred thousandths, actually less than a hundred thousandths on the base. And I don't think that's enough material. In preparation, I've loaded up a piece of tooling plate. This side and this side are very parallel to each other. So I'm squ I squared at the bottom. Now I'm just going to square up the top. Take a little material off. That'll just make it easier to align the other part on here. It's not strictly necessary. It'll also allow the vice jaws to hold even pressure. Again, not strictly necessary. So I've got the scrap piece of tooling plate I had here. And it's not long enough to support the copper the whole way. 
I'm hoping that won't be a problem because it'll be thick enough to support itself, although the edges are going to be kind of thin. This might be a mistake. I might be making this part again. But this was the size tooling plate I had. Um, I could cut down a much bigger piece, but I thought I'd try and use this piece of scrap. So before I uh, glue this down, I'm running one of my uh, precision flat stones over the surface so that it'll lie as flat as possible. And uh, now I'm going to super glue it on. I'm just going to run a bead down the center here. And I'm going to set this guy on there, let it float about until it uh, seats. Then I'm going to use this uh, parallel to try and get it mostly square. It may not get perfect, but it should be close. And look at that, super glued my. Uh, <laughs> super glued the square to the uh, the uh, gauge block set that I had that's metric that uh, was badly corroded so I couldn't really use them as gauge blocks <laughs> oh yeah I should have thought about that uh, aspect there because it went and glued the gauge block on too it lets you know how good this uh, glue works especially on a very flat surface like a gauge block um, I ended up taking this brass uh, center punch and uh, it actually took quite a hard hit to break that guy loose. So I think I'm not going to have any problem machining it's on there. And I can just clean the gauge block off with some acetone and clean the super glue off. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a ton of corrosion pitting on the surface of this. This is after all the super glue has been cleaned off. I'm trying to catch it on camera. I don't know what you can actually see with this tiny viewfinder, but. Uh, Hopefully you can see these uh, gauge blocks are totally screwed up so you don't think I'm crazy using a gauge block for something like that. The end mill is set at a height where it goes into the aluminum and into the copper all at the same time. Going back the other way. So now I have two square and parallel sides to measure against. So the question is, do I bring it into the final dimension width-wise, which is 0.281, which would be quite a bit of material removed. Would that be strong enough to hold the part in place while I do the plateau? And I'm thinking maybe I'm going to do the plateau first. Uh, I could do the plateau on either side, make sure that the center part is the right width for that part of the T-slot, and then bring the edges in after. That might be the safest approach. Uh, it gives enough extra material to be strong. So uh, I'm going to uh, drop the table back down, touch off the top so I've got a height on the top, and go down the proper depth, and we'll walk that one in. To find the top of my part, I'm using this feeler gauge where it just barely engages the cutter. I will set that as my zero. Then I will back off the part, go up the 21 thousandths of the feeler gauge. And yeah, I know it's an odd value for a t feeler gauge. This pass is conventional milling. I'm probably gonna go back over the same part and in a tiny amount in the Y with some climb milling just to get a better finish. Somehow I made a mistake in my depth, so I had to go cut all that material off. Fortunately, I made this way over wide to compensate for the fact that I know I suck. <laughs> That's not, I, anyway. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're gonna step down slowly this time. We're going to go in 45 thousandths. We're going to try and get the exact amount right off the bat. We're not going to go down all the way. We're going to do it in multiple passes. All right, so the width here is, went from 0.406 to 0.360. So I'm two thousandths off, which is what I expected. And the thickness here should be 0.1 when we're correct. Final pass on this side, just taking off a whisker of material. We're going to go to the other side at this depth, and we're just going to work our way into our final width of the center of the T-section, and then I'll remove stuff off the bottom. 
So we have quite a lot to come off this remaining part here. So I'm just gonna set my Y at some value here, take off some material, measure, and then uh, figure out how much more I need to take off. Again, I'm using an aluminum cutting cutter without lubricant here. It may not be completely ideal, but I'm not seeming to get much in the way of chip welding, so I think we're all good. So we're looking for the final width to be 0.281 across the bottom. I'm going to start with the soaking method. I'm just going to pour some acetone in here. Let that guy submerge. Unfortunately, I've also discovered that the, uh, the paint on the mat here is also acetone soluble. <laughs> So it's dissolving the paint as well. <clears throat> Still on there pretty well. Can also use heat if the acetone doesn't work, but we'll let it soak in acetone a little bit. See how that ends up turning out. So the acetone was taking a bit too long, so we're opting for the heat plate. And we'll just heat this guy up. And I forget the exact temperature, but I think it's in the 200, 200 and something Fahrenheit where super glue starts to break down. All right, so it got up to temperature and came right off. So here's the completed part. And uh, it's turned a really pretty color of orange with the oxidation. You can tell where the super glue is protecting it. Not oxidized, uh, it's normal copper color, kind of pretty, but this is a really nice colored orange, actually, this oxidized uh, copper. In any case, we are done. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.